Time now for an in-depth look at the market news on this Monday, and for that I'm joined on the line by Dr. Yang jun Sok, Professor of Economics at the Catholic University of Korea. Professor Yang, thank you for making time today. Happy to be here. Well, last week the U.S. had its biggest ever drop in employment, but stocks on Wall Street closed higher. Korean stocks uh, were lower today, but the KOSPI briefly touched the 1960 mark for the first time in two months. What's the story today in the Korean markets? Okay, well, uh, the uh, Kospi market, uh, as you mentioned, fell while the Kostak rose. So uh, this, I thought that this would be a good uh, time to look back on the last two months in the stock market. Uh, as we all know, the stock market hit highs in mid-February in both Korea and United States. And then they both had very large drops in March because of the coronavirus. The uh, U.S. Uh, the S&P fell by 33.6 percent, Dow by 37 percent, Nasdaq by 30 percent. Korean fall was similar. Kospi fell by 35 percent, Kostak fell by 38 percent. But uh, April uh, really signaled a very strong comeback for all of these stock markets. Uh, the uh, and when we look, when we compare the current levels uh, with the highs that we had in the um, mid-February. Uh, the market, while not back at the February levels, actually made pretty amazing comebacks. For the United States, the S&P is now about 67 percent of what it was in Feb uh, high in the February. Dow is about at 82 percent. Nasdaq is at 93 percent. Kostak is about 86 percent. So it's doing about as similarly as well as S&P. But what's really amazing is Kostak. Uh, Kostak is actually 98 percent of where it was at the highs in February. So uh, it's virtually back to where it was before the coronavirus, which I think is actually an amazing progress. Indeed. Uh, well, in other news we have from today, the Korean central government accepting applications for the coronavirus relief payments for individual households. Already local governments have been making smaller payments like this, uh, which is said to be helping local economies. Do you think the nationwide relief payments will have that effect? Uh, I think it will have an effect for May, but I'm not sure if it will go beyond May. Uh, the reason is that, well, uh, the uh, regional governments uh, started making these type of t payments in uh, gift certificates uh, in March and April, but they didn't really have an impact on the local economy because, well, we're still at the period of social distancing and people were afraid to go out and shop in fear of catching the coronavirus. But now we moved on from social distancing to every day life quarantine, uh, it's, uh, people have been uh, using the money to uh, do some pent-up consumption. Uh, so what they didn't spend in uh, March and April, they are spending now. Uh, and the weather has been cooperating fairly well, at least until, the, uh, uh, until Saturday. But uh, the, while the uh, uh, coronavirus seems to be getting under control, though we did have some setback over the weekend, uh, the shift in uh, economic problem is shifting from domestic services to exports. Uh, the April exports were down by 24.2 percent, and as your story just mentioned, for the first 10 days in May, uh, exports dropped by 46.1 percent. Uh, WTO estimates that the world trade this year will probably fall be somewhere between 13 to 32 percent compared to last year. And Korea, uh, when we had slowing exports in the past or falling exports, Korea had worse record. It fell more than the global uh, a volume. So uh, because Korean exports takes about 40 to 45 percent of Korean GDP, unless, unless exports, unless world trade recovers quickly, Korea is going to have a very bad year in exports. So the shift in the uh, economic problem is going to move from domestic services where it was until last month to exports. But right now, I think there's, it's sort of in between those two problems, and people are just happy to at least uh, go out in the sun. So I think for May, you're going to see a uh, increase in consumption. Whether it'll continue beyond that really depends on the state of exports for the uh, next uh, few weeks. Well, staying with the general economy in the coming days, we'll have some more numbers from the Korea Development Institute. Also, the Bank of Korea reporting on the financial markets. What should we be watching this week? 
Okay, well, I think the uh, biggest numbers that's going to come up is the uh, economic activities index that you were talking about, but also uh, the uh, Korea April employment figures are supposed to come out on Wednesday. The March figures were not that bad. Unemployment rate only rose by 0.1 percentage point to 4.2 percent. Employment rate uh, fell by 0.9 percentage points to 59.5 percent, but that was better than what a lot of people expected. But there was a massive rise in non-economically active population, 516,000, because people were not actively searching for jobs, probably because they were afraid of the coronavirus. And there were unusually large number of workers who were on temporary leave, 1.6 million, which is about 6% of the employed workers. So uh, we'll have to see whether that trend continues or whether uh, we'll see a trend like the United States where we have massive increase in unemployed workers. If the latter, then the economic recovery is obviously going to be a lot more difficult. Some international numbers that we should be looking out for are uh, first quarter GDP estimates for United Kingdom and Germany, U.S. retail sales for April, and China industrial production and unemployment figures. All right, Professor Young, thanks so much for sharing your insights. We'll be watching for those figures. We appreciate it. Thank you.